Good afternoon. Welcome to Take Your Life Back, another segment for today, August 9th, 2014. Today we're going to discuss something that uh, actually was kind of brought up by my wife, uh, which was to talk about domestic violence and addiction. The combination of both. How do they intertwine? How are they related? Um, so we're going to jump right into that before we discuss any uh, other usual things that we usually discuss during these videos. So I'm going to, again, just remind you, I do have my cheat sheets on my laptop. Uh, the information, 99% of this information comes directly from the Mayo Clinic again. So uh, they are the ones that provide uh, all this information. Uh, I just take the information and I study it and I pass it on to you. So let's jump right into it. Domestic violence and addiction. What is domestic violence? Now I'm going to look up and read it to you. This is directly from the Mayo Clinic. Domestic violence can be defined as a pattern of abusive behavior in a, relation to a relationship that is used by one partner to gain uh, and maintain power all over the other partner. It can involve a number of different behaviors, including, so we're going to go over the list. Now, these are the different behaviors uh, uh, that are signs of uh, domestic abuse and how they relate to addiction. Emotional abuse. Is somebody at your home or do you know somebody that emotionally abuses either their husband or wife uh, or it might even be in your own home? Are you being emotionally abused? Is somebody constantly riding you, playing mind games with you? Those are signs of emotional abuse. Now, here's what they say, their definition. Can involve such things as trying to lower the other person's self-esteem by con constantly criticizing them. Is somebody telling you no matter what you do that it's no good? It is totally wrong and it's unacceptable and, uh, as far as they're concerned. That is emotional abuse. There is no positive reinforcement coming from this person. There is no uh, positive praising coming from this other person. That is emotional abuse. Next one is physical abuse. Now we all know what that is, but I'm going to read what the Mayo Clinic defines it as. Not only it involves physical violence, but it also denying people medical care, getting them to take drugs against their will. So physical violence, uh, if you're being hit, if you're being beat up, even if somebody's just slapping you or even yanking your arm too hard, that is physical violence and that is a sure sign of domestic abuse. It is a sign, it's definitely a domestic abuse. And keep in mind now we're con comparing domestic abuse with addiction. How do they meet? How do they entwine? And how do they become one entwined with the other? Next one, psychological abuse. They are meaning could include any type of threatening behavior that is used to instill fear in the other inv uh, individual. Somebody threatening you, are they threatening you with the other two signs, with physical abuse and emotional abuse? Emotional abuse is, is a, a sure sign of one in physical abuse and usually uh, psychological abuse is how they threaten to, to give you that physical abuse and give you the emotional abuse. These are all steps. These are all signs. Next one, sexual abuse. Now, we, nobody wants to even think about the, the uh, consequences of sexual abuse and, and why do people do that. But here's their definition. It involves coercing the other person to perform sexual acts or engaging in sexual behaviors. That is sexual abuse. If two people cannot together decide that they want to have whatever type of uh, intimate affair or intimate situations, if one person is forcing the other one, that is sexual abuse. Financial abuse, another big one. That could lead to some of the other ones. Financial abuse, if one person is abusing the finances at home, that could, use, uh, could go into uh, emotional abuse. It can go into physical abuse. So here's their meaning. Financial abuse occurs when by making the other person's financial dependent and then controlling their economic resources. If somebody, let's say if I'm the husband and I only give you two, three dollars a week and tell you you have to survive on that no matter what because I'm not giving you any other thing or any other amount of money, that's financial abuse. Folks, I am not a marriage counselor. What I am studying to be is a addiction recovery coach, but I will tell you any marriage counselor will tell you that a marriage or a relationship has to be a 50-50. It is not 99% the husband, 1% of the wife, or vice versa, or anywhere 25-75. It's 50-50. 
So now we said, uh, we define what is domestic violence. Let's go now, we talked about the addiction. So let's go and what is addiction? We've spoken so many times on what addiction is. We've spoken how to stay sober, how to continuously uh, seek recovery, how to continuously seek sobriety. But what is addiction? According to the Mayo Clinic, and I'll read, the, an addiction must be at least three of the following criteria. Now, so let's start with the first one, tolerance. Do you use more alcohol and drugs over time? In other words, I think I've said this where I, when I started drinking vodka, I'd start with two, three shots and get my little uh, fix and get my high. And then by the end of, before I hit rock bottom, I was up to 10 shots a day of vodka. And that was June 22nd, 2013. So tolerance is, if your tolerance is building up, that's a sure sign of addiction. Withdrawal. Mayo Clinic's meaning, have you experienced physical, emotional withdrawal when you have stopped using? I did. June 23rd, June 24th, June 25th of 2013. Those f first few days was total withdrawal. Have you experienced anxiety, irritability, shake, sweat, nausea, or vomiting? I had every single one of those. Folks, I used to wake up every morning for years after drinking the night before with the signs of vomiting, the signs of uh, uh, nauseation, all those were uh, things that were existing in my life daily for years. Emotional withdrawal is just a as physical. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, is uh, as bad as physical withdrawal. Emotional and physical work hand in hand, even in addiction, like in violence, physical abuse, emotional abuse. Now let's go to the third one. Limited control. Do you sometimes drink or use drugs more than you would like to? If we've spoke about this, about people that can't go cold turkey and just hit rock bottom right away and you're, you're weaning yourself. If you had, if you're used to having three beers a day, make a goal for yourself. Next week, cut down to one beer. Then in the following week, sobriety hopefully will come right into place. So here is uh, limited control. Here's their meaning. Do you sometimes drink or use drugs more than you like to? Do you sometimes drink to get drunk? I did all the time and I guarantee most people that are addicted to alcohol and or drugs do it most of the time. Does one drink lead to more drinks sometimes? No, it leads all the time. If you're addicted, it will lead all the time to more than one drink. Um, do you ever regret how much you used the day before? Of course, you'd wake up with the why me, the pity pot parties, and, and the memory lapse is not knowing what did you do to the person? What did you say to the person that was uh, involved with you the night before or even uh, right after you coming home? How did you get where you wanted to go? So those are all sure signs. Uh, negative consequences is another one. Have you continued to use even though they have been negative consequences to your mood, self-esteem, health, job, and family? If you have an addiction, unless you seek sobriety, unless you go and, and accept the fact that you have hit rock bottom, that those signs will all be there. Negative consequences are going to be there in your addicted life. Negative consequences turn into positive uh, consequences when you seek sobriety, when you say, I've had enough and I need help. Neglected or postponed act activities. Mayo Clinic, have you ever put off the reduced social, recreational work or hostile activities uh, because of your use? I'm too tired. I don't want to go out right now. Meanwhile, it's because you just had six, seven shots of vodka. I don't want to play baseball today. I just want to lay around the house. You'll go ahead and do it. Because guess what? When you tell somebody to go ahead and do it, I can guarantee what you're thinking about is, is continuing drinking or smoking or snorting. Uh, you have a lot of time. Uh, or energy spent. What does that mean? Have you spent a good amount of time obtaining, using, concealing, planning, recovering from your use? These are action plans with addiction. As much as I want you to have an action plan with sobriety, these are action plans with, uh, with addiction. How am I going to use my drugs or alcohol? How am I going to obtain them? How am I going to conceal them? How am I planning uh, is going to go on to uh, retrieve all the the alcohol and or drugs that I need so that's another sign desire to cut down do you right now watching this video have a desire 
to cut your alcohol down? Have a desire to cut down on your drugs? Have you sometimes thought about cutting down or controlling your use? Have you? I guarantee you have. And it usually those thoughts come the morning after. It's not during the time, the night before, it's the morning after. Because now your alcohol use and your drug use is slowly leaving your body and you're coming back to your senses. You're coming back to what I've said so many times, what God created, which was a perfect human. Now you're coming back until you put something down your throat again or put something up your nose. Have you ever made unsuccessful attempts to cut down or control your use. Have you ever done that? Unsuccessful would mean a relapse. Had six or seven. I know what they're like. So have you ever had that? And if you did have that, isn't it time today, August 9, 2014, to do something about it? Domestic violence and addiction go hand in hand together. They feed off each other. And it's a shame that anyone out there has to put up with it. Let's continue. Domestic violence can include things like, now let me first read the paragraph, and it's up here, so I'm going to look up. Let me read the paragraph with the Mayo Clinic. Using passive-aggressive behavior to punish the other person. An addiction, if you're intoxicated with alcohol, you're intoxicated with drugs or, uh, or uh, uh, anything, you will command the other person. You might physically command him. You might even mentally command him. And God knows how. What else you might do, but the addiction, the substance that's in you will do that. This refers to a situation where the perpetrator masks their expressions of anger, and it can include deliberate forgetting to do things, unwillingness to be intimate, obstructive behavior, and deliberate lateness. Here are signs. Here are domestic violence can include things like signs. Number one, stalking the other person. Folks, somebody is following you and somebody keeps calling you that is stalking you have a right to call 911 intruding into an other individual's personal life an example of this would be reading their private diary it could be as little as your alcoholic father your alcoholic mother going into your personal sp space and, and invading that space that would be stalking that is stalking make threats of violence neglecting the other person make threats of violence. I'm going to kill you. I know it's an expression that people utilize. However, be alert and, and see what the situation out of that expression comes about. So be careful. Neglecting the other person. A sure sign. If you have an alcoholic father or mother, are they neglecting you? Because if they are, we need to do something about that. Intruding into the other other person's individual personal life. An example of this would be reading their private diary. I think I said that already. I'm sorry. Uh, calling the other person insulting names. That would be verbal abuse. If they're calling you every name in a book, rem remember it's not them calling you. It's the addiction calling you the names. Because when your loved one or your co-worker doesn't have any type of alcohol and drugs in their system, they are totally different to you, so that's another thing. Alternative names for domestic violence are as follow. Different terms can be used to describe domestic violence. Number one, family violence. That would be in, within your whole family, there's a lot of violence going around, a lot of people hitting each other, a lot of people saying bad things, that's fine. Domestic abuse, and that would be husband and wife, children, Everybody, uh, and, and you know, I used this term the other day. It's the Jerry Springer show at your home. And it's not even uh, something I like to say, but that's the only way I can describe it. Uh, domestic battering. Is that going on in your home? Because if it is, you need to do something about it. Uh, intimate partner violence. If your sex life at home has become where the one person is so much dominant over the other person, it's not a 50-50 uh, thing. If, if your uh, uh, whatever sexual activities you are having going, if it's becoming violent, that's a sure sign. Spousal abuse. This happens so much. And, and spousal abuse and domestic violence are almost together anyway. Uh, but uh, spousal abuse... A lot of times a husband or a wife, whoever is being battered, is afraid to say anything because they are afraid of tomorrow. What do I mean by that? They're afraid that 
after the police were called and they come either whoever was arrested comes back home what will tomorrow bring will it get worse what do I do it's sad but it's there addiction and domestic violence domestic violence has been described as a hidden face of addiction here's where they entwine we talked about that okay domestic violence has been described as the hidden face of addiction Wow that's unbelievable this is due to the coexistence of the two conditions which we started this we said how domestic violence and addiction go hand in hand they really do addiction and domestic abuse also share a number of uh, characteristics including they both involve loss of control you being battered the person that's battering you or abuse abusing you lost control as much as the person that's drinking or snorting a, a, a or doing crack or whatever lost control so those are the two things that combine together so here's what we're doing in this in this particular segment right here we're comparing the two and how they meet together the individual continues with the behavior even though it's leading to negative consequences in their life they're continuously going to be addicted to something and continuously going to be abusive, whether it being emotional, physical, psychological, sexual, or financial. The two go hand in hand. The individual becomes preoccupied with their behavior. It becomes their obsession. It's almost like every time this particular person or people drink or do whatever drugs they do, they are in their mind pre-planning what they're going to do, which abuse are they going to give you. They're looking for a fight. They're looking for the physical and emotional and financial abuse. It's an obsession with them. In both instances, they can be increasing, increasing tolerance for their behavior. Both addictions, domestic abuse will tend to get worse over time unless treated. An addiction needs to be treated with recovery, which then will hopefully uh, treat the domestic uh, abuse or physical abuse it's not guaranteed because not every person remember what they said three three characteristics have to be here not every person that domestically abuses or violently abuses or physically abuses a person is addicted but when they do coincide together these are usually uh, signs of how they go hand in hand addiction and domestic violence have a negative impact on the family domestic violence and addiction have a negative impact how is that possible besides the physical and emotional and mental and financial abuse how else can it have an impact because what your children see is what they're going to do in their future so if you're planning on drinking and snorting and smoking in front of your children be prepared for your children to grow up to do that if you're going to hit your wife you're going to hit your husband be prepared for your son to be an abusive husband like you are or your daughter to be an abusive wife like you are be prepared for that it's a shame that I or anyone would even allow you to do that but we can't uh, worry about uh, things like that when I say that is it's impossible to be monitor every household that's basically what I'm trying to say so you as the responsible parent mother and father need to quit your addictions and stop with the violence and stop with the physical abuse and the domestic violence and be good example for your children lead by example and if you don't want to lead by example what you show your children in front of your children is what your children are going to grow up to do I guarantee that back both of us excuse me both of these conditions have a negative impact on intimacy and sexual relationships when you're addicted and you have that domestic abuse situation in your life those two together are going to have an impact on your intimacy and your sexual relationship that I can guarantee you the only way it's not going to have an impact is if you also into the domestic violence want to include the uh, sexual abuse which is a crime any of those things emotional abuse physical abuse psychological abuse sexual abuse and financial abuse out of those there's at least three that are crimes go ahead and do one of them you are then committing a crime let's get back to this there's usually some type of ritual associated with each behavior both tend to involve a cycle what does that mean 
does it mean that usually most of these two intertwine together in the late afternoon or in the evening? Let's look at it this way, or as some people would say, let's face it, most people drink and do drugs in the late afternoon or in the evening. That's when the other domestic violence comes in hand. It's not often that you hear domestic violence in the morning. It's usually late in the afternoon or in the evening because that's when the addiction is in full force. So that's what that means. The partner will usually find it difficult to abandon the person who is addicted or abusive. They feel that they need to be there for that person. You get beat up, you get abused, and you just keep coming back. But folks, you hear it, you see it every day on television and the news. Sometimes it's just too late to turn around. If you feel threatened, if you feel unwanted uh, because of domestic abuse, uh, if you've been hit, if you've been s slapped, do something about it now. It would only get worse. And the more this other person is drinking and do drugs, believe me, it'll get worse. Both conditions tend to involve a great deal of denial. I am not. I'm hitting you? No, I just tapped you. I'm definitely not drinking too much. Well, are you kidding me? I'm not doing that much drugs. That is denial. Folks, do something about it today. Let's go to the third page. Both the substance abuse and domestic violence perpetrator abuse their own powers for personal gain. Of course they do. That's what they do. Both conditions, domestic abuse and addiction together, is for personal gain for the abuser and the addicted person. Addiction and domestic abuse lead to shame, reduced self-esteem for those involved. When I say for those involved, it's not the, the perpetrator, it's also the victim. There's shame involved in that, so sure sign. In the beginning, the individual may be able to restrict their bad behavior to the home, but over time it becomes more noticeable in areas, other areas of your life. You go out to a party and friends will come up to you and say, why do you let your husband, your wife touch you that way or talk to you that way? Why do you let that happen? So whatever is going on at home, if you don't nip it in the butt and you straighten it out now and you report it, it will go out in the open and other people will see it. So do something in your own home. Do something today. Reasons for correlation between addiction and domestic violence. These are the reasons. There are a number of reasons for why addiction and domestic violence can tend to coexist, including alcohol and drugs lower the individual's inhibitions. That means that they are more likely to engage in bad, bad behavior. Of course, that's, that's so obvious. Intoxication makes people more impulsive. Anxiety. They will do things no thought without no thought future consequences of their behavior. They don't care about the negative consequences. They don't care, but you as the victim need to care. When people are intoxicated, their decision-making capacity is reduced tremendously. Of course, the more they do the drugs, the more they drink, the less the capacity of uh, uh, proper thinking is available. Uh, they are far more likely to make poor decisions as a result. That's so true. Certain drugs, such as stimulants, can cause people to become paranoid. And what happens then? Not only now are they addicted and they doing the drugs and the alcohol. Now they're they're seeing things. They everything, as I say, and people will laugh. Everything is a conspiracy as we know it. This paranoia may motivate extreme behaviors. Now, with this paranoia, we're going into the emotional, physical psychological, sexual, and financial abuses. Do you see how addiction, domestic abuse come together? They, they, they feed off each other. Let's go in here. Addi <clears throat> excuse me, addiction is an excuse for domestic violence. This is what the Mayo Clinic is now writing, so I'm gonna look over here and read it to you. It is common for those who engage in domestic violence to blame it on alcohol and drugs. It's the alcohol and the drugs that made me hit you. It wasn't me, honey. You know I love you. I would never do that. It was the substance that did it. When they sober up, they will feel full remorse and claim they did not want to do any of that. Again, it was the alcohol and the drugs that did that. That's why I hit you. That is why I abused you mentally. It wasn't me, and I'm sorry. 
until I do it again tonight and we do this again tomorrow the same speech. Uh, while addiction doesn't influence the individual's behavior, there is no justification for domestic violence. You are not allowed to accept it. Don't accept it for you. Don't accept it for your children. Be aware if you have it going on in your household and there will be a phone number I'm going to give you at the end of this little segment here that you need to utilize and you need to utilize it immediately. If the individual decides to seek help for their addiction problem, it will be good for everyone. But this is what I told you before. Um, but it may not be enough for their addiction problem. Uh, it may also still lead an end in violence. So if they do get see, seek help, which is for the addiction, so they're going to go do the 12 steps in AA and they're going to utilize my method to go into a rehab center, Nine, maybe 90% will then end the violence, the emotion and abuse because now the addiction is disappearing and it's gone. But it doesn't guarantee that the one uh, aspect, which is the uh, domestic abuse, is going to disappear totally. So this particular person that needs to also get the addiction under control needs to also possibly control the uh, violent part of uh, him or her. It is therefore vital that the causes of the domestic violence are dealt with alongside the treatment for the addiction. So when this person goes into a rehab center, this particular person, or if the person goes for the 12 steps or my methods, this particular person needs to also get some kind of counseling, some kind of treatment for this violence, this, this tendency of um, mental and physical abuse of you, ma'am, you, sir. Don't take it anymore. Put your foot down. Make it today because tomorrow might not be here for you. Some people may enter sobriety and never engage in domestic violence again, and that would be in a perfect world. But it's not guaranteed. But there is no guarantee of this unless the individual gets the root to the root of the problems. What are the root of the problems? Is it financial that's making this person drink and then weaning money away from you to supplement their own drinking and, and drugging? Is it a sexual situation going on at home? Is it physical abuse? So be careful and all that. So domestic abuse absolutely goes hand in hand with addiction. And it, just because the person says, I'm addicted to alcohol and I'm addicted to drugs or either or, does not give them permission to abuse you in any matter. So the answer is no. If you are being abused, first and foremost, know that you are not alone and the abuse is not your fault. It isn't. It's the person that's abusing you. It's their fault. It's the addiction that might be motivating that abuse. But it's not an excuse. If you are in an abusive relationship or you think you are, safety, support are critical. So I'm going to give you a phone number and, and if you're watching and you have any of these things that we, and I'm going to go through them real quick again. If you have any of these things, this is the phone number you need to call. There are trained advocates right now standing by. You need to call 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. 1-800-799-SAFE. Let's go do a recap real quick. Domestic violence and addiction consists of emotional abuse, physical abuse, psychological abuse, financial abuse, and sexual abuse. Those are the main ingredients. What is an addiction? Tolerance, withdrawal, limited control, negative consequences, neglected, time and energy spent, desire to cut down. Domestic violence can include things like stalking, calling the other person insulting names, making threats of violence, and neglecting the other person and or their children, uh, invading their private space. Alternative names for domestic violence are family violence, domestic violence, domestic battering, intimate partner violence, and spousal abuse. Addiction and domestic violence uh, has been described in the hidden face of addiction. It is the hidden face. The domestic violence hides behind addiction. The addiction accelerates the domestic violence. They work together. They both involve loss of control. The individual continues with its behavior no matter what. The individual becomes preoccupied with its behavior. Addiction and domestic violence have a negative impact on the family. What your children see you doing. So husbands, if you're hitting your wives, your son, 
is going to grow up to do the same. Is that what you want from your son? Wives, if you're abusing your husband, your daughter, or your son, they're going to grow up to do the same. If that's what you want from your children, shame on you. It's bad enough that you have that problem. Do not educate your children to grow up to be just like you. Both of these conditions have a negative impact in intimacy and sexual relationships. It will affect your bedroom. Bottom line, the partner will usually find it difficult to abandon a person. You become a victim and you become a victim of violence and domestic abuse, of emotional violence, and yet you don't want to make the phone call to 1-800-799-SAFE. Come on, you need to make that phone call. Reasons for correlation between addiction and domestic violence are the alcohol and drugs lower the ambitions. Uh, certain drugs, such as stimulants, can cause people to become paranoid. It's a conspiracy as we know it. Everything, people are against me, no matter what. Intoxication makes people to be more impulsive. The anxiety, the jitters. Folks, it's right here. Do you see how domestic violence and addiction work hand in hand? Do you see that? Because it is so true. And believe me, I did a very little amount of research on this. You know, I always say that I do look into things pretty well, but uh, when uh, we finished my video yesterday, I was talking to my wife last night, and she said, why don't you do something on domestic abuse or on uh, child abuse, how it intertwines with addiction. And here I am. I spent a little time doing it, and look at what I found. Look at the impact of what I just told you. I guarantee you there are people out there watching he, uh, this particular video that have any one of these uh, items going on. I guarantee there's somebody out there with emotional abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse. There's somebody out there. And I guarantee you whatever, whoever the, your abuser is, has an addiction to drugs and or alcohol. Guaranteed. There might be that 10% that don't. But it's usually hand in hand going together. Addiction and domestic violence are partners in crime do something about it. Is the addiction an excuse for domestic violence? The answer is no. A clear no. Call 1-800-799-SAFE. 1-800-799-7233. Get help. Get help today before it's too late. Let's jump into what we usually talk about. This was an emotional one. This is not how to deal with sobriety, how to stay sober. This one is an emotional segment. Very highly impact segment for you and for for me and um, I hope to God that uh, it helps somebody out there my contact information is ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com that's r-a-l-f dot f-r-i-e-d-r-i-c-h-s at yahoo.com my phone number is 631-599-0218 my website www.clearviews.info that's c-l-e-a-r-v-i-e-w-s dot i-n-f-o on my website you will find tons of videos I have now 25 videos that I produce each and every week sometimes I do two sometimes uh, last week I did six and today makes my sixth one for this week these are segments of abuse segments of sobriety and addiction, segments of intervention, everything you need to know of addiction. They're all related in one way or another and it's about addiction. They're all related because addiction either gives you continuous non-sober life threatening situations or it gives you sobriety. Those are the two. So on this website you'll see all my videos. You will also see videos, articles, and newspaper clippings by doctors, psychologists, and psychiatrists. Those are the medical people that actually give us the information, give us the recommendations. It is not me that I give you any of my uh, videos, any medical advice. I just relay what I study myself. So on those uh, uh, videos you'll learn a lot. So go to my website www.clearviews.info now on Facebook I also have a page called clearviews.info I post things daily on there whatever I post on my Facebook goes directly to my website so it's constantly being refreshed alert 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 
if you're one of those people that needs to have rehab, needs to seek a treatment center, go to page 7 on my website, look for your state, whether in New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, click on your state, look for a location nearby to you that has a treatment center. If you don't see a treatment center that's close by to you, go to your search bar, type in treatment centers for Raleigh, North Carolina, for Savannah, Georgia, wherever you might be, and you'll find them then. Now let's move on. There are different methods of seeking sobriety. We always talk about this and I constantly have to talk about it. You have AA, which has the 12-step program, which has been around since 1936. Uh, it, it has a lot of people coming and going through there and it has success for people and it also um, has people that uh, didn't feel as comfortable with it like myself. So what did I do about it? Back in June of 2013, I came up with my own method. And my method is exactly what you're seeing right now. You're seeing my video, uh, hopefully enjoying it, and you find it very informative because that is the purpose of my videos, is to give you information that I look for uh, via the Mayo Clinic or wherever else I might look to feed you that information on signs on what to do and how to do. So you have my method and my method consists of my videos, it consists of my website, consists of uh, texting people, emailing people. Uh, it, there's so many different things that my method consists of. And folks, my method does work. It has worked for me. I have not had a relapse since the initial hit and rock bottom, which was June 22nd, 2013. So my method works. I don't have 12 steps. What I do have is 16 alternative steps. The difference between my 16 alternative steps and AA's 12 steps is AA's 12 steps is very textbook, excuse me, textbook written. Uh, it, it, the words might be a little hard to understand for some people, but the end result is sobriety. So how, how does mine compare to that? I also have uh, the, the steps, 16 steps, written in layman terms with the end result being sobriety. We both are looking for the same result. We want you to be sober. We want you to have sobriety in your life. And then the third method would be the uh, treatment centers uh, and programs. Those are great. They're 30, 60, 90 day programs and um, you need to um, utilize them if you have a situation where you just, excuse me, if you have a situation where you just feel that you cannot be at home unsupervised and untrained by a professional. Untrained meaning a person that can help you with your sobriety. Check in to these uh, uh, programs. Most of them accept insurance, most of them accept Medicaid. We learned from uh, experience last week from dealing with another situation that uh, somebody in my life that there are programs that are out there for people that don't have insurance and or Medicaid. They are state sponsored so if you don't have anything but you still need help call me 631-599-0218 and I will forward the information on how to go about uh, finding the state-sponsored uh, rehabs, but I will tell you just from experience from this situation that I had with another individual, what they require you to do is to detox 100%. So if you have an idea that you want to go in there and, and have a doctor medicate you to detox you, it, they're not going to do that. It didn't work for this person. This person didn't want to detox completely. What he wanted to do go in there and detox and have a doctor give a medication to bring another high in. It doesn't work, folks. I keep telling you, you're either going to quit 100% or you're just going to uh, continuously try and relapse until you hit rock bottom. So let today, August 9th, 2014, be your day for the rest of your life. Make today a new beginning. So you have those three. You have my methods, you have AA's methods, and then you have uh, the rehab centers, but those three methods need to be worked with your higher power. My higher power is God. I try to, and I say I try to daily, include God in all my decisions. It doesn't have to just be with uh, sobriety. It doesn't have to be with uh, uh, addiction. What it does have to be is my daily life. Folks, God created you in certain ways, His way, and if we for whatever reason, go off course in life and we make those mistakes, which millions of people do, go to God, ask God for guidance.
He will guide you from addiction. He will guide you through sobriety. He will guide you through a financial crisis. He will even guide the domestic abuse uh, per, uh, perpetrators that are doing the uh, physical abuse and the mental abuse. He will even guide them, but what they need to do is go seek his guidance. They need to, in combination with his guidance, seek treatment. That's how that all works. So you need to include God and and whatever decisions and whatever walks in life that you want to do. So now we have those three. We have God included. And then we have uh, other branches that do have programs uh, such as Knights of Columbus, Lions Club, uh, YMCA, some of your churches. Now you're including God just by going to, to, to churches for help. So uh, you have all that now put together. So I just want to ask you folks, and this I really need to know this is if this video has an impact on you and you are a victim of violence a victim of physical abuse a victim of mental abuse a victim of sexual abuse why don't you call 1-800-799-SAFE call them now before it's too late you really need to call them today and you need to report what's going on and don't become a victim further do not feel sorry for your perpetrator and I hate to use the word perpetrator, but that's exactly what a husband that hits you is. That's exactly what a husband is when he sexually abuses you or a wife physically abuses they, you. They are considered perpetrators and you need to report them and you need to get help at 1-800-799-SAFE and you need to do it today. I also want to just bring out um, another fact here and the fact is, is that the percentages in the United States of domestic abuse are sky high right now. And, and the reason I figured out from doing a little research is that the police departments locally, statewide, or on a national level are afraid uh, to prosecute uh, people because, for a lot of reasons, uh, the first reason, of course, everything's financial, but what happens usually is that the victim, which is usually a, a husband or a wife, lets it go into the courts and then uh, when it's ready to go to trial, the victim drops the charges. I think the United States is trying to now, um, and, and this is on a state and local level also, is pick up charges on these individuals and continue prosecution. Uh, but when you lose the main witness of your case, which is the husband or the wife or whoever the victim is, you have a good chance of losing the case. So folks, domestic abuse is on a, on a sky high rise right now in the United States and it has to be nipped in the butt and it has to be done right now. Today's Saturday. My friend uh, who's up north, uh, like I told um, everyone last night, today is his one month anniversary. Congratulations, good job. I hope you continuously continue on the uh, path of sobriety and I hope everything works out uh, the way you want it to. And I'm always here for you for whatever questions you might have. Uh, as you know, each and every time I do a video, I get it right to you immediately so you can take a look at it. And sometimes you don't get to see it right away because you might not have internet service. And you don't get my text because you don't have uh, phone service. So congratulations. On my uh, other situations, and when I say situations, on people that do talk to me about needing help, um, it's a very uh, sad uh, scenario that I'm having that some of those people are not communicating. Uh, some of the pictures I'm seeing on Facebook for somebody that just maybe two weeks had told me that they hit rock bottom and they can't live with alcohol in their life anymore. And then I see a week later, they change their profile picture and they're posing with uh, a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of wine in their hand. Um, you know, I don't want to say shame on you because I've been there and I know what it's like, but I can say this to you is uh, you haven't hit rock bottom. What you probably have is that remorse feeling the day after partying and uh, probably people pressuring you and saying that you're nothing but an alcoholic or a drug uh, a drug addict and uh, that's what you were having remorse feelings and you got a hold of me and and of course uh, I always want to help because I don't know at what stage of addiction you're in and uh, then I see these things and it kind of uh, breaks my heart to see that and I hope to God that uh, you have plenty of more remorse feelings for only one reason because then I know that you're gonna hit rock bottom soon because you need to hit rock bottom you need to straighten your life out and you know who you are and I'm not gonna mention names I never mention names on my uh, videos because it's not fair to the people but you know who you are when you're ready reach out to touch uh, and, 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 and touch out to me because or reach out to me because I am here waiting on the sideline I am waiting to help you God's waiting for you to seek his guidance too so uh, 
in the meantime, please try to take good care of yourself. And uh, that's all I really have to say about that situation. So now we reach out to people. We, we talked about domestic violence and how it intertwines with addiction, how they come head to head together. If, if you're a victim and you're watching this video, and I guarantee you there are millions of people that are out there, uh, and, and I do know that I don't have millions of people watching my video, but for the thousands that might be watching my video, I can guarantee you there are probably at least a hundred that are victims of domestic abuse, uh, which include sexual abuse, financial abuse, psychological abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, and there was one more emotional abuse. Guarantee you somebody out there. Utilize the system of getting help. Your perpetrator who has the addiction, who is abusing you, needs help also, and you can help. But in order to help anyone in your life, you need to help yourself and save yourself today. You need to be around tomorrow to help people. Don't let it come to a point where I'm going to read about you in a newspaper. Reach out right now and call 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. Reach out to me, 631-599-0218. Email me. That's ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. Email me, call me, text me, call my business number, which uh, I'm the only person that listens to those messages. 1-844-393-9355. Go on to my uh, website, www.clearviews.com. I have a comment section. Leave a comment. If you're afraid to make the phone call to 1-800-799-SAFE, Get in touch with me. I will get the proper situation uh, handled for you. I will make the phone calls. I will get the proper authorities involved for you. But do not let domestic abuse and addiction run your life anymore. Stop it today. Stop it August 9th, 2014, because today is the day that you need to get your help. And remember, folks, a sober today makes for a better tomorrow. And if you truly, truly believe it in your head, if you believe it right here, you can achieve right there. To believe here is to achieve there in your living room, in the kitchen, wherever you're watching this video. Believe it and you will achieve it. I hope to God everybody has a pleasant, great, sunny weekend like it is here in the Hamptons, Long Island. It's a beautiful day. It's very hot out. And I hope wherever you are that you have a safe day and you have a great day and you don't have a day of any more abuse. Because the abuse has to stop and it has to stop with 1-800-799-SAFE. Stop it now. Have a great day. More importantly, have a sober day and God bless you.